Hey folks, Techniverse here. Today we are going to go over the slicing capabilities of Fusion 360. Now there's a lot here to look at and a couple minor adjustments you'll have to make from a normal slicer to use this software in order to go straight from design to print, but it is fairly straightforward and I'll show you how to do it right now. All right, all my Technivores out there, welcome to Fusion 360. As you can see, we are in the design space. This is the designated space when you open up a new design and it is blank right now. Now, I'm gonna quickly create a design that we're gonna be using for a couple of videos here. It is going to be super simple, just a circle that I'm going to turn into a cylinder, but we are going to extrude this real quick. You can use any model for this process with this slicer. I'm choosing this simple one for reasons that I will explain to you shortly. We're gonna make it a little larger than necessary on purpose. And this is it, this is my basic model. You can call it a puck if you like. But now we are ready to move on to the next step. So basically we're gonna go over here and go and change our workspace. Right now we're in the design workspace and we're gonna select manufacturer. And this is where we're gonna find the stuff that we need to 3D print that. It's gonna be up here and it's gonna be under additive. So go ahead and click that. And now you're gonna to need to set up your machine. So this is pretty straightforward. I do have one set up ready to go down there, so we're gonna make another one, but we're gonna end up deleting this. Basically, it's gonna give you options for the machine, the operation type, things like that. We're gonna select additive for the operation type to simplify the things that we know we need to enter, and we're gonna select our machine. Now, I'm using the Ender 3, which is already showing up right here. If you can't see this, go ahead and click the additive button, and it will filter, let's see, in the samples here, it will filter out the ones that are additive manufacturing ones. And you can find all sorts of them in here. Um, I'm using Creelty Ender 3 Pro. And we'll just select it. And this one's working really well for me. So basically that knows a lot of my dimensions. It's gonna put in the build plate and things like that. It does have some settings over here that need to be changed. You can see it says that it's using PLA 2.85. Let's adjust some of the print settings. Let's go ahead and to start, select this PLA175, because that's what we're gonna be using. And we'll grab that. And it's gonna give us a base layer height of 0.2, and it is FFF technology. So um, now, this is the body that we're gonna be working on. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and hit OK now. And here we have the basic print settings. And in here you can edit your settings for pretty much everything from the basic settings, which include layer height, extrusion width, and things like that, uh, your infill pattern, to the extruder itself. Well, it's just, this is where you'll set your temperature, your bed temperature, your extruder temperature, as well as the exact filament diameter. A lot of these things are gonna be set by selecting that 1.75 millimeter PLA we selected. Uh, but they can be altered here. And layer number of parameters two, um, layer extrusion width multiplier, there are a lot of settings here. Uh, infill, you can select a lot of options here, although selecting the actual infill pattern seems to be in the basic section only. Skirt and brim sections, you can see number of skirt and brim loops, and distance. This is at zero. We're actually going to leave it at zero because I like the brims. They keep things from lifting up and corners from popping off. So we're going to go ahead and leave that. However, we don't need a raft. We'll leave these settings alone. It's nice to know they're there because I do use them sometimes. And a quick look at the support settings. The overhang angle, which is determined by our machine, the Ender 3, is set to 67. And there is bridging and cooling systems as well so um, g code yeah verbose okay so we are ready to go with this and we are getting this error here that says toolpath is out of date which means i need to recalculate
and now it's added my setup as you can see there is no toolpath so the way to correct that problem is to simply go to actions simulate toolpath now this is just going to give us an idea of the toolpath it's going to give us a simulation it's not actually going to generate that toolpath we need just yet Oh, excuse me, I gotta hit calculate over here. Then you will get this nice representation uh, in green lines down here of the toolpath that we can then play through and see the different layers. So let's go ahead and check that out. It's basically showing us how it's gonna print. Uh, it's putting down a brim and printing upward layer by layer. And you can see the infill that it's using there as well is just a standard regular grid infill. So go ahead and pause that there. Uh, it now has a toolpath, but in order to actually finish this process, uh, we need to make sure of a couple other things. So we're going to check the infill and go up to FFF infill. Up here you can see the density and a couple of those options we were talking about. Now we're going to try most of these out. Um, rectilinear is pretty basic. That's the one we just saw. So for our first print, we're going to do a simple one that we've seen a few other places and do the honeycomb. And the last thing we need to do in order to generate our file is right click on the additive toolpath here and click post process. And when you do that, this menu will pop up. And you can see here that I have already set mine. Now, uh, what you need to do is click this and go to additive. And if you don't come back with anything, it means you don't have the post-processing script. So what you need to do is click on this here. And here you can see we have the post-processing library for Fusion 360. And this is a website that you'll be taking to when you click that little link I show you. And what you want to do is navigate to this box that says any get any type and we're going to select additive and it's going to be the first one that pops up that we're going to use it's generic fff machine unless you have either a prusa or an idea maker so the or an ultimaker excuse me um, there is one for anet 3d fff machines i will be trying that out on the et4 but for right now there was no cruelty specific so I went with the generic FFF machine and this is working really, really well. Basically just download it to a location so that you know where it is. If you wanna know where to download that to, that's gonna be this path that I'm showing you right here. And the folder it's gonna save that to is right here. You're welcome to change it to another folder but it may just be easier to copy and paste this to your download location or uh, you can actually open this up through here, and when it's open, go ahead and drag it, drop it from whatever folder it downloaded to. That way it's in the folder it's looking for automatically, and then when you select additive, uh, you'll have to close this and then reopen it by clicking post process again. When you select additive, this option will be here. So it is going to ask for a program name or number. It did make me use a number, wouldn't let me put in a name, uh, but it did work pretty well. So we're going to click post now and it's giving us an option to change the name and save it as a type here uh, i want to go to a different folder and as you can see that's pretty generic let's do puck And you can see it's given me this file here with some information in it. It has a lot of things, including the version of Fusion 360 used to slice it, but more importantly, it has the name of your printer that you have entered and the material used, the diameter, and things like that. Now these can all be adjusted through settings, and they're not really that important. What is important is the actual G-code here, which is going to print your file. So we can go ahead and close this, and what I want to point you to is this now this is my puck g code file i'm going to go ahead and grab this and drag and drop it onto my micro sd card 
from which point we can pop it into the printer and print. So there you have it. I will show you this print real quick. As you can see here, it's going down amazingly well. I do have a couple other prints I can show you and I will pop those on here in just a moment. But for right now, look at the beauty of this honeycomb infill. This is pure bliss. I'm really enjoying playing around with this it's a slicer. I haven't had any issues with it so far. And in fact, the generic profile I'm using for my Ender 3 Pro has carried over pretty well to both the ET4 and the T Pro. So they're both working really well alongside this printer. And I'm really, really happy with these results. All right, guys, I got my coaster here. As you can see, it has beautiful infill. Now, I didn't let this model finish up because I wanted that infill exposed for the next video and for uh, visual purposes of my coasters. But I did do a little test model before this. This is just a little design I knocked up in Fusion 360. And as you can see, um, it turned out pretty flawlessly. Now, this is the bottom surface. It came out amazing and the sides as well. Um, this is a PETG. And then you have the top surface here. Uh, it is very, very decent. Now, I think I will add one more shell in my settings here because I think that will smooth this out even more. And I'm used to running with three or four and this is only running two. The reason I tend to run a couple more is because my infill density is generally set between 10 and 15 instead of at that standard 20%. So um, this is a really nice model. Um, I don't quite know what it is. Obviously, you can see I haven't done all the cleanup on it yet, but um, that is basically the gist of it for slicing and printing with this. As you can see from this other design I have here, if you'd like to see the other infill settings, you'll have to watch out for the next video. But so far, I am really, really enjoying the slicing capabilities of Fusion 360. As always, this channel is brought to you by the Spine Patreon supporters. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, head over to www.patreon.com slash technivorous. That's going to be it for this video. As always, I am Technivorous, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out our main channel page where we do a free giveaway for our subscribers every month. So far, we've given away things like a Capricorn PTFE tubing kit and spools of filament. So the giveaway videos are always pinned to our main channel page. So all you have to do is subscribe and leave a comment on the giveaway video for the current contest. Feel free to check out this video right here. YouTube picked it from my content just for you. And if you haven't already, you can hit the subscribe button right here. So what are you waiting for? Become a Technivore now. Thanks again. Technivorous out.